So on the Arduino, we've been working with these digital pins right here. These are pins that can be switched on and off. And, and we have these PWM pins that we'll talk about a little bit later that are digital pins that are actually capable of shutting on and off really, really fast. Okay, but so basically the purpose of these pins is to be high or low, on or off. Okay, um, and they can be inputs or outputs. So we have a special set of pins right here called analog inputs. And these pins, what makes them what makes them really cool is not only can they be on or off, but they can be several values like in between. Okay, so like um, not several values, they could be like a whole range of values in between. Um, and so this is this is where we can start to get to do some really really cool stuff is using these analog inputs. So before I show you how to use them, I'll explain a little bit better like what they are. Okay, so with a digital input, if we were to graph our input, like over time say, or like our input voltage, so if we're using a pin as a digital input, say like to sense a um, button being pressed, then when the button's pressed, it's gonna be five, and when it's not pressed, it's going to be zero. And when you press it again, it's going to jump up and be five again. And then when you unpress it, it's going to drop down to be zero again. <clears throat> and that's basically what it does. It switches between on and off. Okay, and, and so this would be like on the digital input. Okay, and so over here, I'll, I'll show what an analog input would look like. Okay, so an analog input is going to take that 5 volts and it can be anything between 0 and 5. Okay, and so depending on like the resistance of a sensor maybe, it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 5. And so if you graphed it, it might look something like this. Okay, and so you can do some really cool stuff with this and that's kind of the the set of activities going to get us there okay but instead of going from zero to five what the arduino does is divides it up into a thousand twenty four values or steps so it's going to be between zero and a thousand twenty four okay and so you can get any value between a zero and a thousand twenty four as you um use something as an analog input Okay, and so you can see that this is useful because it can give us a whole range of values in between two data points, or in between those two points. So not just on and off, but like things in between. Okay, and a lot of sensors are analog sensors in that they give you a whole range of values. Okay, now um, a couple things that we want to mention here. Um, there, are, there are some problems with analog inputs. Um, so when you're this is not really going to be a problem for us but what happens is the analog input what it's doing is it's comparing the input voltage to the power like the the voltage the incoming voltage of the arduino itself which it assumes is five volts okay and so this would be the voltage either coming through the usb port or through the um like the voltage converter um and and it generally is five volts but sometimes it's less and it can be less when you're plugged into the computer and the computer is not plugged into the wall um that would be really the one case or if you plugged it something a power supply into the dc port that was like less than seven and a half volts or so and so um it wasn't able to keep it exactly at five volts it might be a little bit below and so since this works by comparing to 5 volts, if the incoming voltage is less than 5 volts, then it's going to slightly change these input values. And so if you're doing some kind of like project where you're planning to have a sensor hooked up long term and maybe have this plugged in somewhere, doing taking readings all the time, that's where this issue could come up um, if you're switching like power supplies or something. Otherwise, it shouldn't be a problem. So let me go ahead and show you how to use the analog input now. So we have to reference one of these analog pins. So these are labeled 0 through 13. 
you'll see these have an A in front of them, so A0 through A5. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to first create a variable for it. Um, which we'll say int analog in, and you can call it whatever. So like if you're using a potentiometer, you can use it like the potentiometer pin or the pop pin or something. So we'll say A0. Okay. And then when we use pin mode, we're going to set it as an input. Okay, so we store analog pin as a variable, and here we set pin as output. And that's all you have to do to set up an analog input. Okay, we'll verify it to make sure I did everything right. Okay, there you go. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is this stores this as an integer, um, which a0 is not an integer. So I'm curious as to why that works, um, and that's not an answer I have for you. And if you're able to figure that out or learn that somehow, please let me know. Okay, something I forgot to add here was how to actually record or take an analog input. So I, I told you how to set it up here, but I haven't actually told you how to get it. So we have the analog input, come to pin A0, we assign as an input, and then the way that we record that value is we use analog read. Okay, so remember we used digital read before, now we're going to use analog read, and the only thing you have to put in here is whatever pin that it's connected to. Now, this this program is going to read the pin, but it's not going to do anything with it because we haven't stored it anywhere. So you would have to then say int analog, um, or we could say analog value, maybe. And we'll set it to start at zero. Okay, and then we could say here, okay, so analog value is equal to, and so now we've stored it there, and now, like, you can make decisions. You could use an if statement where you're comparing something. Sorry, not a colon there, uh, some braces. You can store something in here regarding analog value being less than something or greater than something, and you can make a decision based off of it, okay? So here's how we set it as an input. Well, here's how we reference the pin. Here's how you actually take a reading from it.